Revelation 12. That's where we're going to start today. Uh, what we would like to do is keep Christ's perspective on the cosmic war that's raging every day. Now, have you already covered the book of Job yet? They were doing Job down in Florida. Have you done Job yet? No. Uh, Job is a parallel book to the book of Revelation. In fact, much of what we see going on in Job 1 and 2 is what we're seeing in chapter 12. And remember I told you there are 404 verses in the book of Revelation, but 800 quotations, allusions, and imagery drawing from 800 other passages of Scripture. This is one of them. Uh, basically, if we put it in 21st century kind of uh, movie language, we would write this, and it's in your notes. Above the softness of our blue-green planet, there are hostile forces poised. They range across space, lurking and flying about, doing their master's biddings. They are former angels. They are Satan the dragon's army. They are deadly, vile, malignant, and very intelligent. By the way, the, the name of these creatures means intelligence, demon. These aliens to our planet are highly skilled, incredibly powerful, we saw that yesterday, usually invisible warriors. Demons can hear us talk, can pass through walls, can fly through space, can inhabit human and animal bodies. I had a friend that was an Arizona State Trooper. It was kind of gross, so if you don't like gross stuff, don't listen. Uh, but he was in the Arizona State Highway Patrolman, and he was one of my students. He had retired and went to Bible school. And he said that, uh, that they did a drug bust on the highway, a caravan, you know, uh, you know how they're always ferrying drugs from wherever they take them to the metro areas, and they were getting them going to L.A. And he said, this guy came out of the car, and the, the highway patrolman was wearing his vest like they're supposed to, and just came right out of the car and started shooting, and poom, 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 hitting the vest, which is painful, but he was making it. Well, these highway patrolmen uh, doing drug bust had shotguns. And so, you know, as he was being shot, he went, you know, started pumping his shotgun. And he said that that guy coming out of the car took, I mean, it was just like, it really looked like one of the action movies, which always are so fake. He said that, that he kept shooting. He emptied his six shells, and that guy never stopped coming. And he said that his eyes, his face, the sounds coming out of his mouth, he said this was not human. Anybody that's in law enforcement and in medical uh, fields have encountered humans that something else is. Uh, I remember early on there was um, a movie, um, Men in Black, and there was this monster that came inside of a human and their eyes would blink inside of the eyes of the human. And it, it scared them because they could see there was something inside of them. That's science fiction. This is true. Demons can invade and indwell and take over humans and animals. And in Jesus' ministry, he encountered non-stop writhing, foaming, thrashing, chattering, monster activity demonized people. The demons trying to kill the humans. And so this is going on. These extraterrestrial beings can take on various forms that look human, look powerful, look fearsome. They are watching over the realm of the serpent and his seed. You can see we saints of God are at war. See, what I want you to realize is whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter if you're going to be a missionary or a pastor or a youth pastor or going to full-time work or just be a normal. I met a radiologist yesterday. I met an uh, airline person who wants to be an airline pilot. I met someone who wants to be a videographer and a lot of in-between. It doesn't matter if you're a born-again Christian, you're at war. You are in the battle. Why? Because if you're born again, you're an enemy to Satan. You and I have the Holy Spirit. He can see that. He can see the seal of the Spirit on us. The demons can too. And they are very much wanting to do anything they can to oppose us. So let's see what they can do. Let's scan Revelation 12. Now remember I told you yesterday that chapter 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 are called the parenthetical chapters and they cover what theologians call mysteries. Now, a mystery is not a scary thing we don't know anything about. It's a truth that God doesn't reveal 
until it's here. It, the things revealed in chapter 10 through chapter 15 are not fully explained anywhere else in the Bible. This is amazing. A great sign appeared in heaven. So that means it's a sign. That means now we're getting into signs of, of something that means something else. So what that means is there is a woman clothed with a sun. Women don't wear the sun. You know what I mean? The, the sun is a star. So this is a, an image. This is visual. This is a picturesque part of Revelation. Most people think the whole book's that way. It's not. Most of it is absolutely literal. This is a sign. It's a picture. And this woman clothed with the sun, with the moon, under her feet, and on her head, a garland of 12 stars, immediately makes all of us who are Bible readers say, I've read this somewhere else in the Bible, right? You all have. This is the, the vision, the dream that Joseph had that he shared with Jacob, his father, and his 11 brothers. This is a picture of Israel. And, and so, you know, I mean, if you read Genesis, you can see this. And being with child, she, she was in labor and pain and gave birth, and another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. <laughs> Boy, that sounds... And now we're in the Lord of the Rings, you know. Uh, the dragon, or whatever his name was. I mean, it's just like... And that's where people get derailed. They say, can this be... What is going on here? This is a sign, this is a picture, and it's going to be explained, and it is explained by God. Verse 4, his tail drew a third part of the stars from heaven, he threw them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born, and she bore a male child. Now we're getting to the book of Psalms. This is Psalm 2. For those of you that, that read the Bible a lot, it immediately jumps out. That's going to rule with a rod of iron? That's exactly what Psalm 2 says Jesus Christ would do. And so we're tracking with John recording the revelation of God that is tying together hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other portions of Scripture. So obviously this child, this male child in verse 5, is Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He's the one coming to rule with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God in his throne. And so basically, and I won't read the whole chapter, you've already read it, it's part of your assignment, but basically this is saying that Satan is opposing Israel trying to stop Jesus Christ's birth. That's what this whole 12th chapter is about. It actually starts back in verse 19. If you look at chapter 11, verse 19, and so the temple of God is open in verse 19. Uh, actually, that's a whole new paragraph starting. And in heaven, and the Ark of the Covenant was seen, and there's thunderings and lightnings and great hail, and a great sign appeared. See, all, it's... Chapter 11, verse 19 is actually the first verse, should be, of chapter 12, is all I'm saying. And what is it saying? That there is victory. You see, God is orchestrating this. God knew that the dragon was going to try and devour the child. So God is aware of the battle going on. That's why the Bible says, greater is he that is in you, what? Than he that is in the world. We are more than what? Conquerors through Christ. Uh, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities. Angels, good angels, principalities, bad angels. Nothing can separate us from God's love. That's what this chapter is about. <laughs> 